Writers love to complain about how difficult it is to write. Maybe they feel guilty about not having a full-time job where they must be obsequious, commute, sit, sit through endless meetings, forego naps, enjoy, enjoy only two-week vacations, and stay sober, at least during the day. <laughs> In reality, nothing could be as bad as office work so writers pretend in their Paris Review interviews to write eight hours a day, <laughs> whereas a half hour would be a lot. And they claim to slave over five drafts, which is unbelievable. Only confusion and indecision could account for more than three drafts. Stendhal once remarked that writing fiction is not a full-time job. Only writers as prolific as Balzac and Joyce Carol Oates can claim it is. The rest of us blurb other people's books and write too many emails. How else to fill up the obligatory eight hours? <laughs> Pornography, cooking, and adultery are other ways. And of course, drinking. I, I once read that so many writers are alcoholics because they can get away with it. I'm not denying that I had my struggles. After shelving four gay novels, I managed to get only the fifth published, and that was through the intervention of the poet and translator, Richard Howard, who convinced Random House to take it after they'd already rejected it. In our culture, we ignore beginning writers and honor the experienced excessively. When I started submitting novels in the pre-Stonewall 1960s, my gay subject matter was offensive, especially since I didn't, didn't write about hustlers or criminals or drag queens, but rather about the middle-class guy sharing an office with you. The familiar is more threatening than the exotic. Years later, various editors would tell me that they'd been moved by my submissions, but hadn't dared to accept them, lest their colleagues think they themselves were gay. In fact, my first published novel, Forgetting Elena, read gay only to someone with X-ray vision. My second, Nocturnes for the King of Naples, was damned in the New York Times book review for being too obviously gay. Explicitness, according to that critic, had eclipsed whatever small talent I might have had. It was only my fifth published book, A Boy's Own Story, that was favorably received. Harper's Queen magazine in England once declared me the most maligned man in America. Now that is no longer true, if it ever was. <laughs> Today I'm happy to say that there are many brilliant gay writers at work. Andrew Sean Greer won the Pulitzer. Peter Cameron just wrote a masterpiece, which I read in, in uh, ma manuscript. The hit play on Broadway is The Inheritance. Alan Hollinghurst won the Booker, and in my opinion, is the best novelist, period, in the UK. Even people who aren't gay are willing to write about gay men, like Andre Asiman and Hanya Yanagihira. Now everything is cute, confu so confused that my forthcoming novel, A Saint from, from Texas, is about twin sisters, a nun and a baroness, who are only gay around the edges. <laughs> when I first started getting published in the 1970s, writers, oddly enough, were the only gays visible. Now TV series and major films and celebrities are usually lesbian or gay, or if they're up to speed, transgender or gender fluid. Gay subject matter is represented in every genre. There are gay mysteries, gay children's books, <laughs> and if one is Japanese, gay comics. There are still many unfilled slots. Larry Kramer, it seems, is rewriting American history and turning the founding fathers into the founding mothers. Where, one wonders, are our gay villains, virgins, gay mad scientists? Even the National Book Award 
has seen fit to honor a gay novelist. And for that, I am very, very grateful. To go from being the most maligned to a highly lauded writer in a mere half century is, aston <laughs> is astonishing indeed. I, I would like to thank the, the dedicatee of my next novel and the love of my life, Giuseppe Gullo, my husband of 25 years and always my first reader, Michael Carroll, my sister, Margaret Fleming, John Waters for three decades of friendship and that hilarious introduction, my agent, Binky Urban, my pub publicist, uh, Sarah Mercurio, the great patron of the arts, Beatrice Fonritzori, who's with us tonight, and my wonderful editor, Lisa, Lisa Mayer. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>